Hi, I'm Chris Madrid and I'm here with Michael Canadas. And today we're giving a program on occupational dolls. Now, that might seem like an odd topic, but when you think about it, uh, dolls, you know, they mirror humanity. And as collectors and, children, and even children, many dolls were either made specifically to represent an occupation or the dolls were dressed to uh, re represent an occupation. So I think probably the first thing we're gonna start with here is Santa Claus. Now, is that an occupation? Well, I think so. He's a toy maker. He's a- Delivery man. Delivery man. He's a boss. He's upper management. He's an enforcer. He's an enforcer. So you can look at your dolls and sometimes you can look at them in a different way. So this particular one is Louis Sorensen, who was a very, very... Uh, he was a prolific artist. Yes, yes. wax artist. Wax artist. artist. Mm -hmm. And so we have this wonderful Santa and then we have really one of the first first printed cloth American and that's Santas. Nast? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's yep. Tom, based on the Thomas Nast uh, illustration. Yes, and he actually, this was one of the first ones that really was sort of solidified what Santa Claus is. For, for Americans. For Americans, mm -hmm. yeah. And then here there's this beautiful German um, Santa. Father Christmas. Father Christmas. I mean, for this program, we're gonna call him Santa Claus. But once again, you know, that's a lot of work. He's flying around the world. That's right. He's making dolls. And this one really is a, an enforcer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you better be good. <laughs> so where would you like to go next? Well, um, why don't we go to, well, why don't we start at the, uh, at this end of the table, because right. they're all mixed, so yes. it, it, it's just they're just on the table for. Why don't we start with a courtesan? Okay, so we're starting with the oldest profession in the world, and this lovely lady is a courtesan. And let's face it, women did not have a lot of options. Yes. Um, this is the oldest profession in the world. But a courtesan would be almost more of a intellectual yes uh, entertainer and they would uh, have a salon a salon yes. they would they would entertain they would be edu well educated but they would be sophisticated yes more than just and i mean we're kind of making a stretch here this could be a, also a fine lady but yes they could also represent a, right. a courtesan right and then what we have here is another area where particularly genteel women um, were, well, this is a nursemaid, but a governess, because okay. typically governesses were um, women of genteel birth that came okay. from a poor family or they were single and that's what they had to do. But they were, they were of a higher class, but not, obviously, not, not able to be married off. Right, and what happened is they, in the hierarchy of you know, the servants, yes, they were high, but they, unfortunately, they hovered in this between area yes. where they were kind of above the servants, but definitely below the family, and I imagine that was a pretty lonely. It, it was. Really Think lonely. of Jane Eyre. Yeah. Yeah. And then we have another nursemaid, which is the, the um, uh, Alma and the baby, and these are the um, Door of Door Hope. Of Hope. So this is basically your babysitter. And, and that was not probably an easy no. uh, job. But I do, love, I do love the combination of, of the Alma and the, and the it's children. It's wonderful. And they do, they do still carry them around like this. They do. Still to mm -hmm. this day. And then, uh, and then this we, one's precious. And then we have another uh, a governess, uh, but a, a Grodner Tall. And she's a pin cushion. Wonderful, absolutely wonderful. But notice again, this the very tall high caps. Mm -hmm. caps. And in a way, you think, well, that's medieval, but it actually identifies them too. Oh, yes. As their profession. 
or their advocation. And then we're going to go from Door of Hopes to this wonderful um, policeman. policeman. So the thing about him is we could either decide, is he the hero of the story of Door of Hope Dolls or is he a vill villain? Maybe could be a little bit of both. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. And then we go to this fabulous paper doll here. The Protean Man. The Protean Man. And what's wonderful about him? 1811. 1811. And he has the most remarkable, I'm not gonna go open them all, we'll be here all day, but all of these costumes. I mean, there he has so many professions. I know, he's- Turkish a, costume. Morning suit, walking suit, but then we get into, he's very military. He was a Quaker for a while. Officer uniform. uniform, land forces, full dress, circa 1700, monk's habit, naval uniform, German SR, knight in full armor. I actually like that one. This one's very colorful. And um, gentleman's evening costume. So, I mean, there could be an entire program on him, and there probably should be. There probably should be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So well, that was just a teaser, people, because yes. we've got a lot to look at. Yes. So, so where do you want to go next? Well, let's Chris? go to this lovely girl here who actually is a dancer. And when we're talking about women and professions, she was probably very talented, but as we've talked about with courtesans or prostitutes, Unfortunately, she would be like an opera dancer, and that would just be really one step up. Just one step up. From a courtesan, because it was not a very... Maybe, maybe, maybe she was a professional dancer and took it very seriously, but the society would not. No, that. no, and usually, I, usually you would, you know, if you read the Regency novels or Victorian novels, they talk about, you know, the opera dancers as being kept as mistresses by um, the wealthy men. So let's go here. We have a wonderful little guy. Black soldier. He's a soldier, and we believe he must be some kind of a messenger. Oh yes, because he's got because a nice little pouch. He's got his pouch on the back. He's got his leather, uh, he's got his little uh, journal or his um, actually that's a wallet that they carried um, and he's beautiful wax great boots he's, he's got his buff uh, britches on he's a wonderful representation I have still haven't figured out what that uniform is but I mean maybe someone will tell us in the yeah comments. that would be great mm -hmm. so then next to him we'll just move over here is this wonderful little wax that we believe represents a nurse. Yes, I would think that this is a very early nurse. Yes. When when the concept of, of uniform started. And right. Of course, there wasn't a uniform company. You made them yourself. Right. And, and, you know, Florence Nightingale was the first one who actually made nursing a profession. But, you know, her uniform was throwing an apron over... A dress. A dress. Mm -hmm. So there wasn't... Um, there wasn't a official uniforms for, because one of the things too, they didn't really know about hygiene and. Well, she's the she's really right. the pioneer of that. Exactly. So you can see that all the white pieces could be easily laundered, where the the wool uh, dress there that would be a little more difficult. Right, but you see also how covered that is yes. too. So and then she's got a wonderful little. Um, handkerchief in the oh, back of course, here the mm -hmm. and she does have a little pin cushion 18 this is 1837 1897 I think it says okay so that's the current reign of Queen Victoria yes so it's a little commemorative piece yes so she's a sweet little girl now this guy or, or the, the that's not the reign of Victoria that's a jubilee piece oh yeah <laughs> you're right I didn't think about that you learn something we're a little yet. we're a little slow on the draw today. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Bear with. <laughs> okay, now he, he has to come forward. Yes. 
he has to come forward. Now, that's a soldier. That's a soldier. And I think what's interesting about this, Chris, is all, pretty much most of the dolls we've talked about could be dressed in another way to represent anything you want, but this was yeah. meant to be no, a this, soldier. No, this, I, I don't know how you could make him other than you, a soldier. You couldn't. You'd have to break that off. You'd have to do, I mean, this is what he was meant to be. Yes. And I believe they were, you know, absolutely marketed that way, too. Yeah. I, and honestly, we talked about this in other programs, but I truly believe this was a boy's toy. Oh, I would say so, too. So we're going to move on now, since we're going in this direction. Fabulous dolls here. These are farmers. Farmers. Mm -hmm. Those are traditional Chinese um farming uniforms. So basically that's like a raincoat. Isn't that just amazing? It is. Think of it. it is. I mean, but how ingenious. I mean, honestly. Oh, he's got a little bitty hat. But so, and there's two of them. And if you can see, there's slightly different um, carving and painting on Well, these. because, even, you know, even those that were made, you know, they made thousands of them. They were handmade. So they're all going to be different. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, once again, we come to the front here for these wonderful gentlemen. Obviously. Do you want me? Can I? Sure. Okay. Of course. Obviously meant to be a male doll. And what would you say? I think he's a nobleman. That's what I was thinking, too. And he's a guard. Oh, oh yeah. Don't, okay. don't you think he's a guard? He yes. I'm trying to not hit him. Yeah, he's a guard and he's definitely a nobleman. And can you say that's an occupation? Yes. yes. I mean, he's going to be a nobleman. I mean, he's not going to ever... Well, that's his... And that's the garb. I mean, if you looked at a queen doll, if you looked at a doll of Queen Elizabeth... Well, she says, calls her her company or her reign the firm. Absolutely. So Absolutely. it is a business. It is a business. Public relations. That's right. And they're working hard these days. This. <laughs> And here's this wonderful guard here. Probably a royal guard is my guess. Because if we... Looks a little bit like a Swiss guard, but not quite. Oh, person. yeah. But I mean, if, I still think he'd be a royal guard. Oh, I? yes. Yeah, I would think I'm so. I'm going with Karen. that. Okay. And then at, we could probably go a little bit out of order. He's... he's but this would be... What we would recognize. The, yeah, this would is be... Is that a Chad Valley? It is. Okay. This is... Um, uh, Queen's Guard. And, you know, when you see them outside Buckingham Palace, uh, that's what they call them. And when she is in residence, there's 40, um, 40 infantry and officers and four sentries. And don't mess with them, people. No, these guys are highly trained. They're not, they're they're, not there for the, the tourists. Yeah, they're not dec decorative. They are trained to protect the queen. I mean, they don't mess around. Mm -hmm. You got your warning here. Yep. <laughs> and even like, even with this. And they're beautifully, I mean, they're yeah. beautifully made dolls. I have to say Chad Valley does a wonderful job. They do. You know, mm -hmm. I don't know that people appreciate them as much as they, they should. They should. But they're, they're underappreciated and they're not terribly expensive. So yeah, and it's wonderful a fun dolls. Thing to it is. Mm -hmm. So put him back. And we might as well finish up with the soldiers. This would be uh, Royal Scottish, um, probably infantry, and it's the and this is you know British because um, the Scottish people were not allowed to wear kilts for probably a hundred years, and uh, the Busby also is indicative. But this one's nice because he's very complete. Yes. You know, he has his ribbon and he has his, you know, hat and he's got his foreign and the socks and everything. So that's why we brought this one out because it might look, you know, just decorative, but this actually is a, sh a soldier. And this is an occupation of occupation. Of a, a serious job. Very serious job. Shall we move back to this little enchantress here? Okay, so this lovely lady. Oops. Oopie. <laughs> she did. I'll pick her up so you can. Wonderful costume. 
and we feel that she's a gypsy. I think she is. I will add to it, I think one thing that I think has happened here is the, the overskirt is uh, probably disintegrated, uh, leaving this petticoat, which is out of this world. Yeah, it's beautiful. But you notice how this is wrapped almost like a, a, a sari? Yes. That, um, you know, gypsies were descendants of um, people from India. Oh, I didn't lot, know yeah, that. Yeah. So it's got that very exotic... Yes. And the look little tiger pouch. Yes. That's pretty, uh, I mean, it's just an amazing thing. I know, it's got her tambourine, and then on the back, she's got these chips. She's going to do some fortune telling. Yep, and probably, we don't know what that is, but I'm sure it has something to do with telling fortunes and ripping people off. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, that's I know. a stereotype. <laughs> I know, I know, but she's wonderful. And I mean, even, this is so wonderful, this is almost, is this metal? That is Dresden paper. Yeah, I it's, thought it's it was. It, oh, it's, it's, it's got a gold finish on it. It's the wood. I'm going yeah. punk, punk, yeah. punk. It's not metal, it's yeah. wood. We're going to get complaints on the Yeah, I know, sorry, that. sorry. Um, don't hit the dolls. I, don't hit the dolls. In my defense, this is a blended... Uh, display here. This one happens to be mine, so for, for now. For, <laughs> <laughs> but I am, uh, yeah, I am whacking my own doll. I am okay. not hitting Grovian's <laughs> property, <laughs> but fabulous doll and very unusual. Very but what unusual. I do think is interesting is even though the the costuming, the petticoat is European style, the upper part is. Um, you know, exotic, but then the, the cap is very European. Yes, definitely. So, so it may have had something dazzling on top of that, but do you mind showing them the her legs? Oh, the, yes. Because now that it doesn't have a, a silk skirt, yeah. it's not gonna hurt it, because look at mm -hmm. that. So, you know, she was a, I mean, that, those are, that's a dancer. That's somebody who's gonna entertain. Yep, because she's got not. her tambourine, mm -hmm. too. So she's going to dance and do her tambourine, and then she's going to tell your fortune. Yeah, well, that's wonderful. Yes. Your fortune is you're going to travel to Pacific Grove <laughs> and live amongst your people. <laughs> I'm checking my box when I'm leaving here today. Okay, we'll put her down. Yeah, she can just lay down. Okay, so... But once again, this was a very, it was an occupation. I mean, they were. Oh, yeah, they're, but, that's how they're making their living. Yes, but they, it was, to other people, it was disreputable, yeah. which is unfortunate. Yes. So this is a wonderful little girl, just fabulous. And she's a spinner. So she's, she's making the, she's making the yarns and the threads and the. What not? A fabulous doll. It's, it's a tiny little piece. Yes, but I think that Chris, we should point out that we're not going to show that much of dollhouses, but uh, dollhouse dolls. But that's where you really see a, a profusion of yes. occupational. Yes, pieces. and I mean, if this is something you're interested in, and the wonderful thing about dollhouse dolls is that the proportion. Yeah, is such that you can you have can a collect nice collection a mm -hmm. and not take up your entire house. Yeah, well, nope. yes, you can. Yeah, well, but then they have to have longer. houses. <laughs> <laughs> and then what do we have here? This okay. is a cutie. So we're talking about how you know pretty much any profession you can find a representation. This is Jimmy the Champ, and he is an early doll by Hal. Blakely, who was a member of Niata, and her earl, her this was an early work. There was this, you know, so, sold in uh, Bullock's department store, which doesn't exist anymore, but it does have the um, tag that says Jimmy the Champ. But this is unusual because her later work was all in porcelain. So this is this is early, but he's really cute. It is very cute, and and once again, and, you know, I mean, it's a boxer. It's I think boxer. that has to be one of the more unusual pieces that we have uh, profession-wise. Absolutely. Now this, we have several examples, which is great because- um, This is a lost uh, profession. Isn't it wonderful though? Yeah, what happened is in the early- A peddler doll. A peddler, yeah, these are peddler dolls. And even by the middle of the 1800s- um, It was, was going It away. was going, the, you know, by that time, these. 
they were traveling to remote parts, to farms, for people who weren't able to get into town. Yeah, there was no Amazon, there was no... no... But the thing is then it became um, either really popular to make your own or these were also commercially made. But the wonderful thing about these dolls is the fabulous wares. little wares that they have. And these were, you know, parlor ornaments, basically. Yeah, they're, they're from a bygone day. Yes, and even at the point these were being made, they were kind of from a bygone day. Yes, oh, I, I, I agree with you so wholeheartedly. Yeah. But you see, and you see here, you, you think, okay, red cape means uh, itinerant worker, but that's not true, because red capes were very popular in the beginning of the 18th century, like in the time of Jane Austen. Almost all the coat cloaks that they wore that were made of wool were red. Well, you could certainly stand out, couldn't you? Yeah, but I mean, every single one of these, this one's mostly sewing. And it probably has some buttons from Kessner in there. Probably. Mm -hmm. And this one also has buttons. And some of, the, some of them, this one's fabulous with all the wonderful things on there. But we only have, from what I can see, one legal... Um, peddler, which is this one. Because she has, yes, she has her license. Right there, that's her license. No, right I think there. it's in the center. That's this one it. Here. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. fabulous. So that happened after 1842. Oh, so great. you can know that this one's from um, after 1842. It was a law. And then we have the tiniest of tiny. That's a little parent. Uh, Isn't that wonderful? I mean, fabulous. look at that size of this. And she has her little red cape. And it looks like she's selling um, fabrics and treen wear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cute. Very cute. And then we have another. What are you calling this? I think we're going to call this, um, she looks to me like a housekeeper. Yeah. And it's a pincushion. That. But I think that that's... This is probably to represent the shed, what is it? Shettling. Shettling, yeah. yeah. Yeah, with all the keys, but there's none left. But it, yeah, because I, I was going to say this, this is a housekeeper. Yeah, because I was going to say rosary, but this isn't a rosary, so she would be a housekeeper, and that's not a habit. No. Well, I mean, it could be, but yeah, but, but I think it's 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 a it's an apron. You can, yeah, and once much. again, housekeeper was pretty much so you would have the butler, and then you'd have the housekeeper, and then the governess was somewhere floating. Yeah. Uh, maybe above Between. Them. Yeah, but... Still between. Mm -hmm. Still between, yeah. But those are, these are great dolls. And then we have... Shall we go back to this little... Yes. Another one. So he's... I think he's a messenger. Yeah, he does have that kind of look. Doesn't he have that kind mm -hmm. of look? And I've seen, you know, pictures or, or, you know, drawings of them with that kind of a hat. Well, I think if you think about a manufacturer could could take that hat and do different paint finishes mm -hmm. and get a lot of different. Absolutely. Um, you know, cause you could make it a different color and dress him as a soldier. You could, but you also see a lot of prints that have little boys that have something similar to that. But I do think he's some kind of a messenger. I, th I think we can, I would agree. So shall we look at this, one of the few dollhouse dolls that we have in, the group. Is he, he is a chauffeur. So obviously he would have been come later on because he has Teens. to have a car. Yeah, because he has to have a car to drive. Before that they would have, you know, grooms and drivers and, um, uh, what do they call them? Anyway, tigers that were behind them. But this is a chauffeur, which you would need in and, the age of cars. And he is from, um, our, our house, Casa Paloma. So he um, he's wearing light, a light uniform because it's hot in Mexico. Very cool. And then up at the very top here, we have uh, clearly meant to be a sailor. And this is a Maggi's doll made in Italy. But if you see, you know, he has his whistle, he has his bag, uh, pipe, and you know, the red, this red, white, and blue the stripes are so indicative of sailors. Oh yes. 
So this is a cute little representation of a sailor here. And he's a well-fed sailor. Yes, he is. <laughs> well, he was, you know, before he goes to sea, he wants to be well-fed. Now, people may say, why is, she, why is this lovely little doll here? Well, it's a profession. She's a clown. And she probably performed with a hope and... Poodles. You know, poodles. Mm -hmm. Jumping poodles. Yep. And uh, was probably an acrobat with the poodles. And darling little doll. Yeah, I love this piece. Darling. I think it may also have been used as a... Um, Place card holder. Oh, wow. Wouldn't that be, wouldn't you <gasps> want to go to that party? Oh my gosh, yeah, because you can see this. I, I think of a whole table filled with these. Oh. Isn't that great? Oh, wow. That, can you imagine? Well, and the color, it's, I mean, it's a beautiful color now, but I'm sure it was a great color. It's very vibrant. So, should we talk about these? I think we do have to talk about these because we went back and forth. Um, Many people, as you know, people of color did not have a choice of where they there, worked. I think we should call this a forced profession. Yeah. Um, however, they were very, very important in the household. Mammies, um, you know, she could, I mean, pretty much, they, except for the housekeeper, they either ruled the roost in the kitchen and, you know, in their community, or they were very instrumental in raising the children. So um, we feel it's historically important to mention this, but you know, we're not supporting this at all. No, but I mean, they did a profession. Of course, they were not paid. Yes. Um, uh, but they're forced to do a profession. Yes. But, uh, you know, I think that we have to, to study them as an artifact, whether we like the history or not. Yeah, you can't. You can't forget the history because if you forget history, um, we will repeat it. We will repeat it. And here we go around and around. But yeah. I do love the uh, this one. The bisque Look is at that. just and you know it's nice. It's very um, sensitive. I think. I think so. And wonderful little costume. And the firing that goes into making this is horrific. I'm sure there was at least six firings to get uh -huh. that to look the way it does. So every time you fire it, remember you have to take a risk of losing. Wow. Losing them. Now we come to these. These are one. These are Door of Hope. And these are professional mourners. So you would hire them to come and wail and weep at a funeral. Just so you got lots of maximum. Well, you were Great. telling me about some, that, that, that it is, it, they're still doing this today. Right. In a different way, I was telling Michael a story about this man who's made a profession of uh, the person who knows they're going to die. Before they die, they contract with this gentleman, and he asks them to stand up at the service and say things and it could be good things or bad things so one of them it's kind of the same thing yeah i mean but that one of you know i don't think they would say your wife's cheating on you with this guy who's sitting there but maybe they would maybe they would Even. yeah <laughs> but anyway so i mean this is so amazing with door of hope they've done such a terrific job of representing well um, we would never know would we, we wouldn't we wouldn't and i mean and this is obviously was integral to the culture at that time. I mean, it's amazing. I mean, who would say, okay, that's what uh, a farmer looked like? Yeah. And the cotton, little cotton balls, those are meant to be tears. Wow. And then those, those little papers are little prayers. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. These are incredible. All right, so next to them is a very colorful boy, a uh, guy, sorry, it's not a boy. And this is a soldier's uniform. Um, very, it's all made out of leather and um, still leather pants, leather pants. Um, but I still haven't quite figured out. I think it's quite fanciful, but it must be based upon something because I do have another doll with this body or similar to this. You know, body. Chris, I, I, I have an input on this. I, I think he, this might actually be an acrobat. Oh my gosh. 
I, I, you know, now that you say that, that makes way I, more sense. I think it might be an acrobat. Remember, my ancestors were the Flying Newtons. <laughs> Was one of them big? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> oh, I wish that's, I, I mean, I've never thought of about that, but I think you may be because absolutely right. Because that would right. have been, this doesn't so, it look yes. like a trapeze costume? Oh my God, Absolutely. Wow. Look. Because it's so much different than... I one. know. I'm thinking, boy, that is, you know, I, you know, because you're thinking of um, Suave, but even that is way well, different. Well, he's, I mean, he's very handsome. He really him. is. He really is. He's Kessner. Um, he still has marks on the back. I think those are from um, a sample. Yep. So I don't know that he was ever a toy in the sense of play with. Yeah. This but, is, but, I, that's but it's an, I, you know what? I think you're absolutely, look at this is so fun. I learned something. Are we, so I'm going to research that. Yeah, the acrobat. Um, I mean, that was really getting going in the 19th century. Yeah. So, um, I mean, they trapeze didn't... artists, all of that. Wow. I love that. Did that just come to you? Yes, it did. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we overheard. Usually, usually I have to think on, asleep on it and then it. <laughs> No, so, it's, so we're going back to, obviously, Navy. This is a, fa a fabulous Lenchy doll. I mean, look at and this. I do believe that's the British Navy. Yeah. Classic uniform. That is something volunteer. That, I think, was added later. I'm sure it later, was. But, I, but look at the braid. And, yeah. I mean, what a wonderful... And that's a 300 series. Uh, yes. uh, interesting. Lenchy, you can find a lot of occupations. So I think that they drew a lot of inspiration from um, what people do, how they make a living. That's true. That's true. So here is a doll that were occupation, you know. I think this is occupational training. Yes. Getting ready for life. Yeah, this is a Boy Scout. But it is training for life. I agree with you. And I think he fits in this category. Um, because, you know, they used to have apprentices way back when. Well, you know, Boy Scouts, you're learning how to be a man, and you get these useful... Mm -hmm. you make fire, do all right. survival skills, all right. of that. But, you know, what Girl Scouts and Brownies did... Oh, look, marketing and <laughs> sales. <laughs> Cookies and uh, sewing sit upon so your, your butt doesn't get wet when you sit on the ground. Okay, that's good. <laughs> All right. New factoid for today. Okay. okay, so we started with the oldest profession, and we are ending with this fabulous, luxurious courtesan. And this was scandalous. I mean, this was really a very risque I mean, gift. Yes. I mean, we have some... Lady bits showing and, 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 and this is a this is a candy box, so Fabulous. it has it it it's it's decadent in every way. I mean, this showing your legs and your undies. No, that's this is very scandalous. And I mean, it's beyond low cut. The 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 dress. We've got a little. Um, yes, so you've got a little come hither going on here. But it is the oldest profession, so. Yeah. I mean, no one can deny that. Yeah. Well, Chris, this is a great, uh, I enjoyed this very much. So, um, I think that probably everybody could go into their collection and find that they have occupational dolls. I know. I, I, you, I, I think people would say, well, I don't have anything like that, but you probably do. Yeah, if you just go in and look and and you'll see that you have them. And, and it's sometimes it's fun to do this, to bring them out and look at, at them with a whole new eye. All right, well, thank you very much, uh, Chris, and we will be back later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Remember to like, subscribe, and hit that notification button.